little uphill. Plenty of power. Hey there, YouTube. So today we're taking a look at the 2024 Mazda CX-90 Turbo S Premium. Uh, this is actually my mother's vehicle. Um, I'm actually driving it right now. They're getting their nails done and uh, I ended up being the chauffeur. So I figured why not do a little bit of an impression video on the CX-90. Now it's not a first impression. I have driven this vehicle multiple times. We've actually taken it on a couple trips, <clears throat> not out of state, but in this case we've um, gone to go get lottery tickets. We're in Vegas, so we have to go to Arizona or Cali. Um, so I guess, yeah, out of state. Duh geography guys but um in this regard uh, it's actually going on its first long trip next month so let's go ahead and talk about the vehicle um let's give some impressions on how ultimately i like it and let's also discuss some possible things that i may not like about it at all so we'll first talk about the goods in this regard i have to say for a vehicle of this size it honestly is really good on fuel um, we ended up taking it uh, to Rhyolite, which is about 100 miles away from uh, Las Vegas, a little bit more, and it actually was able to make it almost 250 miles on half a tank. Now, granted, of course, this is with the hybrid system being fully active. You do have an I-stop button here, um, and in this regard, with this being the Turbo S, it does have the higher output engine, but um, when you do utilize it, which I utilize the i stop sometimes just so that way of course it can exercise the battery but in this case i normally leave it off and right now it's not going to really do anything because the air conditioner is on and it's really hot outside so what i did notice about it however is the i stop is not very intrusive it's just a little freaky and the reason i say that is the if the gasoline engine when you are on the freeway it will shut off if you are being light on the throttle you're not drawing a lot of power from it um, the gasoline engine will shut off going at 70 miles an hour. Now that trips me up having not had a hybrid in the family before. Some of you guys may just be like, oh, that's mediocre. Oh, and it, well, it is, but I get it. But like on the same token, I have to get used to some things. <laughs> so it does kick right on though. Honestly, the you don't really notice it too much. That's actually really nice about the smoothness of the inline six is not only do these systems position the cylinders for easy start back up, but the inline six is so smooth running, you actually really don't notice much. In fact, I forget sometimes that the engine is still on because it idles so nicely. Interior, the materials are actually really nice. Much like my CX-50, everything is pretty soft touch. I love the cup holders in this one. They're not underneath that mess. So that is really nice. Um, this is the 3.3 liter in line six. The Turbo S, it will output to uh, 340 horsepower while the standard 3.3 will do 280. It is mated to an eight speed transmission. Now it's not your normal eight speed and this is what I also really like about it because it helps in terms of getting the car moving. It is not a torque converter transmission. It is going to be a multi-plate twin clutch transmission but the way it's oriented is a little bit interesting because <coughs> you still get the clutch for the odd gears and the even gears but there's an electric motor that's plated in between them and that's actually going to serve as your torque converter per se um, but it does help in terms of making the car much more efficient and honestly you don't really get that lag waiting for the torque converter to lock up on turns so it's really nice i do like that i actually prefer a hybrid system that still uses a multiple speed transmission to help with the engine unless the the engine is not connected to a generator or um, is not connected to the wheels. So like for example, the Ram, Ram charger that they're using is gonna have an engine, but there's no mechanical connection to the wheels. It's just a generator. So with Mazda, they took a different approach, but I do like the fact that um, that it still utilizes an eight speed gearbox. It is fun to drive for an SUV. It also is really nice to take on the highways. There is a little bit of wheel noise, I'm not gonna lie. Tire noise is not very, is not insanely well insulated. Will you freaking figure out if you're gonna drive fast or you're gonna drive slow? Seriously. 
Sorry, Vegas drivers today are absolutely ridiculous. Don't move here if you're gonna be from California and drive stupid, I'm sorry. But uh, in this regard, the car does a really good job in terms of adjusting its speed. With the 3.3, it also doesn't accelerate you at full throttle trying to, trying to uh, get back up to speed, so that is nice. But um, overall, it actually is really decent. Fuel economy is good as well. A couple things I don't really like about it is you can feel the flex of the car and you can feel the weight. Now, it is a heavier vehicle. With that though, it's not unbearable compared to what cars weigh nowadays. But on the same token, one thing I'm kind of uneasy with is the lack of sway bar in the back. It does make it feel like the front and the back of the vehicle are fighting in terms of direction to go. Whereas, you know, if you do have a sway bar, things can feel a little bit more uniform, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's, it's one of those where you get used to it. And honestly, it's still very comfortable. And even having multiple people in here, it is a comfortable car overall. Now, of course, this did replace the Charger, the 2016. Unfortunately, that car was stolen last year. So my mom definitely was like, I went from a nice, cool SRT 392 to a CX-90, but she's gotten used to it. And there is another car in the family that I do have to show you. In fact, there are four new cars in the family that I do have to eventually make videos on. Uh, two of which are mine, or actually, uh, yeah, two of which are mine, and then two of which are my parents. So this is the first new one that came in, and then the others are actually not new. Uh, well, the one of them is, but the, my two are not new vehicles. They're just new to the family, but I actually got them used because gas is getting so crazy out here. So with that being said, um, car drives great. Gear shift, I think, is my big kryptonite on this car. I love the fact that the cup holders are there and not in the center underneath the, underneath the dashboard, but the gear shift is a bit interesting. Um, you have to actually push it over for park. Um, I have at times tried to turn off the vehicle and didn't realize I left it in reverse. So that did take a minute to get used to. Of course, I didn't run into anything. But um, yeah, so to put it into perspective, I would just go up and of course it would be in reverse, but you actually have to push the button and move left in order for it to be in park. So that's just something that I find a little bit weird, but it's not really a huge deal. And also too, there is a pretty decent amount of room in the center console. Gotta pay attention though and drive. As you guys can see, Gets up and goes. I mean, really, it, I just, I really like the way it drives. It's an excellent powertrain, enough torque, so smooth on idling. Additionally, also, I mean, there are a few cheap points when we go to the back seats. Um, the back seats are overall nice, but the cup holder in the center is a fold down on the driver's side seat. So that's a little bit weird. I would rather like have it kind of like the Subaru where the cup holders are in the door cards because that would, um, uh, of course, eliminate you know, tra eliminate the traffic, kicking the cup holder and eventually breaking it off the seat. So that's really the only complaint I have there. Um, but honestly, in terms of room, in terms of driving, in terms of quality, Mazda did really well. And the car does look a little funky in certain places and some people don't like it, but honestly I do. It's, it's weird in, in its own little way. Um, the one thing I'm kind of mad about that Mazda did was the, uh, CX-70 is just a rebadge 90 with a little bit of a different bumper and a few vents, but that's about it. So um, I, that's probably the one thing that I'm pissed about, but otherwise like this thing is an, is an absolute gem. I really, really like it. I'm glad my parents got it because the Expedition, we still have it, but it is planning on, you know, it, it's getting up there in age and, and it's gonna need to retire at some point. So that's where we're at currently. But in this regard, um, yeah, it's really nice. Transmission also is really nice as well. I just love how these gears are spaced. It's much like that of a ZF8 speed in terms of the gear patterns. It's not a ZF, however, it is in-house designed, but really, really, really is a nice vehicle. I'm really happy that uh, my parents were able to get this. So with that being said, folks, uh, another thing you'll also notice is the suspension is not the smoothest. Now, the Toyota Highlander and the, the 
the Sequoia, you know, the Sequoia is a different platform, but it still rode a little smoother than that of the, of the CX-90. But honestly, I like the stiffness, even if a vehicle is going to be bigger like this. The stiffness helps in terms of, you know, making the car feel secure on the road. So that's something that I personally like. Not everybody will, but overall, I have to say this is a, um, this is an excellent driving vehicle. You know, honestly, kudos to Mazda. They did a great job. I know that they replaced the CX-9, but this was a really good replacement. And I really, really, really like the fact that they did an inline six on this. That's just amazing. So with that, folks, uh, I'll go ahead and let you go for now. But if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to hit me up. Have a good one.